I love creating typographic compositions in Photoshop and find unique ways to combine text and images together. In this video, I will walk you through the entire process of creating a composition inspired by nature. First, I always start with a sketch and that's what you can see here. It's a little bit sped up, but it didn't take more than five to 10 minutes. Now, it's very important not to jump straight into Photoshop. So always get started with a sketch, either on paper or digitally. In this case, I was using Procreate, but it really doesn't matter at this stage. So once you have your sketch, that is going to give you a very good starting point for the rest of the design process. And it's going to really help you to focus on those important decisions that you have to make in the general composition without really spending too much time on the small details that can always come later. So even though you have to spend extra time on sketching, it is still going to save you hours later on fiddling around, deciding on the sizing and placement of your elements. By the way, the links are in the description below if you want to download the assets and elements that I'm using in this video. They are from Behance and Unsplash, so they're completely free. You can use them even for commercial work, so feel free to play around with them. Or of course, you can use your own photographs if you want to create a more unique composition. Now for the creative process, even before you start sketching, what's important is to have inspiration. So you need to be inspired by something and it can be anything. So for instance, with this composition, I was inspired by a squirrel and a robin that regularly visits our garden. So I keep seeing them when I look out the window from my studio and I thought it is a nice idea to turn them into the heroes of one of my designs. Also, when I was a child and we went to a forest hiking with my parents, I always found twigs and played around with them and created small illustrations or even lay out text on the ground very similarly to this composition. So once again, it is just a lovely memory that I wanted to capture here. But believe me, anything can be used as a source of inspiration. So just really have an open mind and try to identify those things that inspire you, the things that makes you excited and make sure you record them and put some effort into capturing them. I also recommend watching our design trends video that we released at the beginning of 2021 because I am talking about how nature, the theme of nature is so relevant and so popular in most creative fields. So that's again something that I wanted to show as an example, how it can work in a composition, but also fusing in the concentric composition idea, which again is one of the trends that we discuss in that video. So if you haven't seen it already, make sure you check it out. The link is in the description below. Before we jump into Photoshop and I show you the most important techniques used in this process, I wanted to explain what were the most important considerations I made throughout the process. So first, it was to keeping it realistic. So for instance, trees almost always grow towards the sky. So I wanted to make sure that these twigs are getting thinner as they go higher up and they're thicker at the bottom. That's just the general anatomy of plants and trees. I also wanted to make sure that there is a comparative size match between the two animals in the comp. So the squirrel shouldn't be too huge compared to the robin or vice versa. And another important thing is that branches very rarely grow in circles or form like a perfect circle. So I wanted to make sure that all those round characters like the O doesn't completely close up. It still should be legible, but it should be still open at one point. And I even changed the A from a lowercase to an uppercase letter because I wanted to limit the round shapes in the text. Another important consideration was to find that fine balance between keeping things organic and realistic, but also making sure that the text is legible. So for this, I made sure that the supporting twigs or branches are slightly thinner than the actual branches used for the text. I also made sure that the copy itself is quite short, so there's not many characters that I have to fit into this comp. And to keep things organic, I also have to make sure that all the characters are connected. So nothing is just floating in thin air. 
So these considerations were already in my mind when I was doing my sketch. But of course the sketch shouldn't restrict your design process, it's more of a guide. But then you can further improve it and refine it as you go along. Now in case you are interested to work on creative projects like this one and get your work reviewed by me personally, you might want to check out our Pro Membership. Here's how it works. Our Pro members always get a lot more detailed instructions and help on how to complete creative briefs like this one. And believe me, this is the most enjoyable way to improve your skills in tools like Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator and Adobe XD, and also at the same time produce work that you can use in your creative portfolio. So if you are interested to join, just click on the thingy on the top right. Now probably the most important technique for this composition to work was the use of the puppet warp as a smart filter. So let me show you how this works. So here I have this twig on the left side and I want to recreate this one here in the middle. So I'm just going to hide this for a second. So that's the one that we will be recreating. And zoom closer, you probably notice that there are a couple of stretch pixels here. So I also want to avoid that and improve it if possible. So let's just hide this and I'm going to use this other layer here. Now this layer at the moment is not a smart object. So that's the purple layer just so you can see it. I'm just going to call it twig so we can find it easily. And one of the first things that you might notice is that it's obviously much larger than what we need there, but also the color is different from the other twigs. And that is because I used color balance to match all the colors because these twigs are clearly not from the same type of tree. So I had to make sure that they match as much as possible. But first, before we do anything, I would always recommend to convert your layer into smart object. So I'm going to right click here and choose convert to smart object. That is before you start rotating or resizing the layer, but you can already mask it out in case you are doing it yourself. So you can have the masked out version and then you convert that into a smart object. Now, once it is set up as a smart object, we can use the free transform tool, command or control T, and I'm holding down the alt or option key to resize it to the center point. And I am going to also change a little bit the proportions because I want the bottom part to be thicker. Remember I mentioned making it realistic. So I'm going to hold down command option shift or control alt shift together and start dragging this bottom point here. And that's the perspective distortion. It's probably something like that will work. I pressed enter to accept the transformation and now we can move it closer here can also zoom closer and I think I flipped this around once so I'm going to do that from the edit transform and flip horizontal I have a custom keyboard shortcut for it but I just wanted to show you where you can find it now that we have in place first let's start with the color correction since I have it close to the other branch we can even zoom closer just to see it and then this is an adjustment if we go to the adjustments we can choose color balance it's command or control b if you want to use the shortcut make sure you have the preview on so you can keep an eye on the changes while you use it and by the way whenever you use an adjustment on a smart object it will become a smart filter which keeps it non-destructive which will allow you to come back to it and make changes so i want to make it a bit cooler it definitely needs to have a bit more cyan, probably a bit more magenta as well, and a little bit more blue, something like that. Let's see, before and after, yes, I'm happy with that. Maybe a little bit less magenta. Yep, that works. Click OK. And as I said, this became a smart filter, which we can turn on and off. And if I double click on it, I can come back to it and adjust the values. So now that we have that set up, the next one and most important one is the puppet warp, which we can find in the edit menu. But before we do that, I am just going to move this whole thing closer to where it needs to be. So I'm again using free transform and just rotating it around a bit and just put the start point here. So I want to make sure it's already set up in the right place. Now we can go to edit and choose puppet warp. And then we have to put down our first pin, which will be here. 
it's almost like the joints when you're rigging a character in 3D. So I put that down there and then we can put another one here, another one here. And once you have three points down, you can already start twisting things and setting your character up. So I'm going to want to create that nice round shape. And one thing you want to avoid is to putting these points too close to each other and also to move them too far away from each other. So let's say I have them placed evenly and then I start moving this point up here. That works fine. But if I drag it too far, it will start stretching the pixels. So you want to avoid changing the distance from the original pin locations too much. Moving them around is fine, but just make sure you keep the distance similar to how it was originally. So I'm going to add another pin here and again, turn it in there. And that already looks quite good to me. But here's a couple of useful techniques you might want to consider using. If you click on a pinpoint, you can then hold down the Alt or Option key, which will reveal this little additional radius around it or control points. And with that, while still holding down the Alt or Option key, you can rotate the distortion around the pin. So you can further adjust details. I think that works quite nicely there. Let's see this one up here near the leaf. So with this one, you can see without moving the pin, I can adjust that detail quite a lot. I think again, that works quite nicely. And another useful technique is if you hold down the shift key, you can select multiple points together. Let's say these three points, the ones that turn white are the ones that are selected. And once you then just simply without holding down any keyboard shortcut, start dragging one of the pinpoints that you selected, you can move them together. So I can have those three selected and just refine this part of the branch. I think that works quite nicely. Now, if you decide to remove one of the pinpoints, you can also use the alter option key and click on the pinpoint that will remove it. And most of the time, less pinpoints is actually easier to work with. So that I think is fine the way it is. Now, if I wanted to maybe move this point here in a bit, I could add additional two pinpoints and then individually rotate that up there. And I think that is probably a little bit better. Again, remember, we have to make sure the legibility of this text is good. So we can press enter to accept these changes. And then the puppet warp will turn into a smart filter. Once again, we can turn it off, turning it back on, and then it nicely folds up and we can zoom out, check how it looks from a distance. I like it, but to keep it realistic, we need to make it look like it's connected to the other branches. And for that, I am going to add a mask, a layer mask. So let's click on the Japanese flag here on the bottom and then use the brush tool and probably paint over this section here with black. So with black, we can hide details and then we will be setting it up so it blends nicely. If you go too far and delete too much, just press X on the keyboard with which you will be able to add those details back. So that's just simply by drawing with white in the layer mask. So I think that looks quite good. Zoom back. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, one thing to remember is that if you want to go back and make changes to your puppet warp with a layer mask outside of it, it might not allow you to see the pins. So for instance, if I now double click on puppet warp, it actually works, but sometimes it doesn't work. So in these cases, all you have to do is to just unlink the mask temporarily. Or what you can also do is to create a group for this layer that's simply by pressing Command or Control G and dragging the mask on the group. So that way it is in a way independent from the layer, but it is still affecting it. If I shift click on this mask, I can hide it and that will reveal those details. Shift clicking on it again will activate the mask once more. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. 
Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. Now, the other important technique that I used here, which made it more realistic, is the shading. Because when I start distorting and turning these twigs around, they won't have a matching light direction. And that's, again, very important to make it realistic. So if I turn off the shading layer that I used, you will see it looks quite flat. And we have just not like a cohesive lighting setup in this composition. While if I turning it back on, you can see that we have the light source established being on top and then whatever is closer to the top is going to get brighter whatever is below like these details here is going to get darker so once again let's just turn it on and off it's almost as if I'm turning on a light from the top and again, that just makes it realistic and ties everything together. Now, for this tweak that we added here, it's currently not showing any detail. But what we are going to do is to set up an additional layer. So I'm going to add that empty layer. I'm just going to call it shading. And then press Shift Backspace to fill that layer with 50% gray. And then press Command Option G or Control Alt G to create a clipping mask for this. Now, what you see is that because we clipped it onto that layer, the branch is just going to fill it in with that gray color. But what we are going to do is to also change the blend mode to overlay. With overlay, the gray color will be completely invisible, but anything brighter or darker than that is going to affect the layer itself. And it is a non-destructive way of using the shading tools, the dodge and burn. So I'm going to switch to the dodge tool, which I normally use in highlights and exposure for this technique. And all I have to do is to paint over the details that I need to brighten up. So that's what I'm doing here. Just remember again, we are thinking of whatever is closer to the top of our composition is where the light source is. So that needs to be brighter. And this detail here again can be brighter. And then I switch to the burn tool. And these tools, by the way, you can find here in the toolbar. So with the burn tool, I'm using it in shadows and set it to 50% or you can set it to 100% if you want to work faster. And the only problem using this tool in 100% is that it goes too quickly to completely black. So like this part here burns out completely. That's something we want to avoid. So I'm just going to go back a bit. And I think keeping it 50% will work better. So this part needs to be darker a bit. And then just a few details added here at the bottom. This part needs to be darker as well. Oh, that's again a little bit too much. But this is the good thing about using a separate layer for shading, because even if I go too far, I can always use a gray color and just simply use the brush tool and paint over that section. So with a soft edge, I can always spread that detail out. So you don't even have to use the burn and dodge tools. You can just simply use the brush tool as well. So for instance, if we make it a little bit brighter, something like that, we can use it to brighten up details. And then when we again go back and make it get darker, we can then add shading wherever we need it. So whichever you prefer, whether the dodge or the burn tool, the most important thing that it is on a separate layer and it's completely non-destructive. So just so you can see, if I set it back to normal mode, that's how it looks. And if I remove the clipping, this is how it looks. But because we are using it clipped and set to overlay, it's going to create that effect that we are after. So just so you can see, when I turn it off, this is without shading and that is with the shading applied. So these were the most important pro tips I wanted to share with you in this video. If you are interested to see more of these type of project-based tutorials, let me know in the comment section below. Also, you can ask for specific compositions that you're interested for me to cover. And don't forget, if you want to work on fun, creative projects like this and get your work reviewed by me personally, you should consider joining our pro membership program. Once again, the link is in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. 
click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.